this is Visual Rhythms, artwork inspired by music. And the exhibition features three contemporary artists who create these harmonious rhythms in their artwork. But when I heard what she was doing, visual rhythms, I knew that was me. I had to, I had to say, yes, of course I'll be part of it. I was excited at the opportunity to join the other two artists in, in a show called Visual Rhythms. I really, one reason I wanted to come is that she would get dancers and let me uh, do what I had done at Texas A&M, inspiring dancers to extend their dance onto paper. She has worked with dance students while she's been here, and as you can see, her work is very gestural. It, it really captures the essence of, of music and dance, and it's very elegant and yet strong at the same time. So, um, just captivating work, and she has this amazing ability to connect with students. Uh, my film, Dancing Hands, which was created for the purpose to inspire everyone to let their hands dance on paper. Uh, when Dancing Hands has been shown on occasion, I have done a workshop where I do pretty much the same thing, uh, get people to dance, dance on paper without the movements, without letting them get on the floor and move. In uh, 1975, I walked up to this sculpture, which was one of my first monumental sculptures. It's only five and a half feet, which is quite a baby compared to some of the larger ones. Um, I walked up to this and I said, uh, this feels more like me than anything I've ever created. And I realized it came from a little doodle. After this then, through the years, I, I just let the drawings flow. And then all of a sudden, I picked up two contact crayons and, you know, did drawings with two hands. And I was totally shocked. I wrote in the lower right hand corner, two hands. <laughs> and uh, I was embarrassed by it, you know, in, at that time. I thought, you know, this is ridiculous, you know, circus act. And um, so when I went back and started drawing with one hand, it just didn't feel right. In order to feel honest, to feel whole at that time in my life, I needed, needed both hands. So in, up until the 90s, it was two hands all the time. Before I show dancing hands, I give them three rules. Pretend like you're the only one in the room. Don't look at anybody else's paper let the line come from deep within you and work as fast as you can with one hand or two. And the reason why I say as fast as you can uh, is because if you stop and think, you can't have that beautiful freedom of uh, beautiful line. So fast, go to mark one page and go to the next and the next and the next. Um, draw with one hand or two, whatever you please. Then after you've marked the pad, I want you to go back and move again, move more. And just go back and forth and back and forth and just keep it up as long as, you, you know, just feel it and do what you want and feel. And then when you feel ready, go to the table and extend your dance onto the paper. And really, I just go off in the corner and either draw or try not to look at them. I, I'm just kind of overwhelmed at what happens, and I don't want them to be self-conscious. Um, first, what really grabbed me was the sculpture. Being a dancer, um, our canvas, as you will, is the space. So to see, that's, you know, the sculpting is the closest, I think, of the visual arts into what I do. Um, and then looking at her drawings, um, what was intriguing was the process of how she moved them. And as a teacher, um, it's really important to me to figure out not only to train their bodies, that's the athletic part, but how to inspire them as artists. Where is the creativity? Why are they doing what they're doing?
even though it was a very abstract work that we were doing, I really liked what I was doing at the end better than what I started off doing. I started finding, um, I guess, the way I wanted to approach what I was doing. It got to the point where I found I couldn't keep my feet still when I was making these lines on the paper, and sometimes you had to jump just a little bit to get your entire body involved, and that felt, wow, you know, wow that someone has taken this technique of doing that and it, it was so from the improv that you do as a dancer I mean that's all there you know you, you're doing that all the time pretend no one else is in the room were really hard. You know, the teacher in me kicked in and I wanted to make sure that everyone was, you know, where they were and taking care of them. But then also that, um, that there were rules kept me thinking about rules and was I att attending to them or not. Um, so I was kind of questioning myself, and not questioning, just observing myself a lot at the beginning and realising that I wasn't really dancing the music, I wasn't dancing what I was drawing, I was dancing the room. Again, my space, I was looking at the floor, I was looking at the walls, I danced the pole, and it really took a while for me to get the idea of dancing on the paper. I still wanted, I wanted paint on my hands and on my body and to cover the whole room with it. <laughs> but it was, it was good for me then to just, you know, really do what it is she was asking, because then I got new material. Then I started dancing in a way I hadn't danced before, which is, you know, half the reason we're here. That was absolutely magnificent. I did peak. <laughs> I confess. <laughs> it made my body yearn to dance. Kara? Yeah. Kara, uh, I loved what was happening with you against that wall. Oh. It made me f uh, feel like I could try it, you know, if I had the wall to help me for security, you know, because I have bad knees and I don't feel free to just dance, yeah. but if I had that wall, yeah. <laughs> it was it's so beautiful. It was just like I was painting on the wall, you yeah, know. Was, Did you feel was, like it? Yeah, that's what I was, because there was a lot of times I was on here and I just felt so like, so then I started just painting like. Well, I thought it was great. I thought it was, it was really, um, it was exploring a new aspect of movement that I haven't really felt before as far as like putting a pen in your hand and kind of like putting what you feel movement wise into paper. I thought it was really cool. I was very nervous um, beforehand. I didn't know what to expect. Even after watching the videos, I I didn't know what she would, would want us to do. You know, if we were going to be able to dance, or if she, we were just going to be standing there and just drawing what we felt. So it was really nice to be able to go leave it and come back to it. I had a good time, it was just wonderful and I was pleased and uh, then when I saw all their drawings I felt very humbled. I felt like, as I've said, anyone can do it and by golly they did and, and I really didn't want anyone to see my drawings because I thought that they were theirs were as good or better than mine. The workshop was so personal, it, it was a time when there wasn't an audience. It was a time for them to feel and respond and create for themselves. And she inspired these students. It was, it was so incredible. I was absolutely thrilled. There was one woman, I don't know if you got her on camera, who was um, 
leaning against the wall and moving. And I wanted so badly to get up there and do the same. There were many moments I just really wanted to move. My body ached to dance. Uh, it was very inspiring to me and very thrilling. It was so beautiful. So I was thrilled. I, I felt um, very close to the dancers and very connected and very grateful that I'm here.